Freestyling is like the skateboarding of Rocket League. Everybody agrees it looks cool, and secretly, we all want to pretend like we're freestylers, but very few people actually know what they're doing when it comes to freestyling. So today, I thought I'd break down my top shortcuts and tricks for every freestyle shot in Rocket League. At the time I'm uploading this, we should have just hit 100k subs, and it's actually unbelievable we came this far in only 6 months, but I need your help now because I want to get us to 200k even quicker. So if you haven't already, go hit the sub button guys, it's completely free and you can always unsub whenever you want. Anyways, it's time to learn how to freestyle in Rocket League. All right, guys, the plan for today is I'm going to be running through my best advice to hitting the four most popular freestyle shots in Rocket League. Those being number one, the ceiling shot, number two, the double tap, number three, the air dribble, and of course, last but not least, number four, the flip reset. But before we go ahead and dive headfirst into each individual shot, I want to share what is in my mind the biggest shortcut to learning freestyling in Rocket League. So without any further ado, the number one shortcut to learning how to freestyle in Rocket League is, you guessed it, air roll. Look guys, I'll be honest with you, <laughs> there's no secret to freestyling in Rocket League. But if I had to come up with one, I'd say the closest thing to it would probably be air roll. And before you say it, no, I'm not just telling you this so that I can plug you my air roll videos. Although now that you mention it, now nah, guys, I'm just playing in all seriousness. Understanding air roll is absolutely critical to freestyling in Rocket League, right? Let's think about it here. Each freestyle shot does have some differences, right? Ceiling shots, you gotta understand ceiling mechanics. Uh, double taps, you need to be able to read the ball. Uh, flip resets, you gotta understand how to reset. But at the end of the day, they all stem from that same root, which is right, aerial car control. So what I'm trying to say here is if you understand the foundation here, you know the air roll adjustments, right? You know how to move your car the direction you want it to in midair, then all of these mechanics are gonna come way, way easier. So long story short, the more aerial car control you have, the faster you're gonna learn each of these shots. So if you're having trouble with any of these shots after the video, make sure you peep my aerial videos, train that stuff first, and then come back and try these tricks later on. That being said, let's hop into the first shot and talk about my tips to hitting ceiling shots. Now I wanna talk about ceiling shots first because they are probably the easiest shot to learn. And what I'd recommend is the first shot you should learn if you're a new player. Now, the reason ceiling shots are the best to learn is because you don't actually need to have your car in the air for that much time, right? You can use the ceilings and the walls to keep your car midair, even if you don't have the best aerial car control. But in terms of executing ceiling shots, my number one tip to learning how to hit them better is just to get a better setup. With a lot of the other shots, you can compensate for a bad setup, but ceiling shots is one of the only shots where if your setup is whack, it's going to destroy the rest of the shot, right? If you hit the ball and it hits the ceiling, it's just gonna fall back down before you can even catch up to it. So what you wanna do to hit ceiling shots more often is when you're setting it up, try to hit the ball as close to the ceiling as possible without hitting it, right? So you want the ball to fly up in the air, hover right around the peak, like it's grazing the ceiling, and then fall down. If you do that, you're gonna have the most amount of time to catch up to the ball, and your ceiling shot is gonna be the easiest to pull off. So to practice this, what I'd recommend you do is don't go into a training pack, because training packs actually ruin the setup. Truthfully, guys, the best way to learn, you know, how hard you need to hit the ball for these setups is to just practice it yourself, right? You can watch me do my setups a million times, but at the end of the day, you need to do it yourself to really get a feel for how powerful your touches are, which is another reason learning these ceiling shots is great to start out with, because you'll make sure you get the setup down uh, when you're trying to learn new shots later. So hop into free play, and first things first, 
practice just chipping the ball up and getting a good setup when it comes to the ceiling shot. If you have Bacchus Mod, another shortcut you can use to practice the setup, and this applies for all the shots we're gonna talk about, um, is click up on your D-pad to put the ball on top of your car. This will allow you to just spawn the ball on the top of your car using that D-pad and then drive it up the wall to get tons of repetitions very, very quickly. Uh, and I think it's the most efficient way to learn the shot. So to recap, the biggest thing when it comes to ceiling shots is just practicing the setup. Make sure you nail this down, run it over and over again in training until you really understand the power you need to hit the ball with. And I promise it's gonna make hitting ceiling shots so much more consistent for you. All right, moving on to double taps, I have two main tips to hopefully help you improve this mechanic. Now, unlike ceiling shots, double taps are where aerial car control starts to come into play, right? Because based on where the ball is going, based on what your read on the ball is, you're generally going to have to adjust your car a little bit, uh, either to the left or to the right, to make sure that you can follow through with the double tap. And right, while there are a lot of moving parts at play here, you know, I could make a video out of each of these mechanics individually. The biggest tip I can give you for double taps is to make sure you aim your first shot. I think the most common way I see people mess up a double tap is just making that first touch randomly and then hoping to correct for it after you get that backward read to somehow hit a nutty angle uh, and score the shot. But the truth is guys, if you wanna hit double taps more consistently, you wanna be aiming your first shot to give you the widest angle, or in other words, the easiest second touch uh, to complete the double tap, right? So if you're setting up a double tap from the right side wall, generally your target should be somewhere above and to the right uh, of that top right goalpost, right? Cause then when you follow the ball off the backward, when you get that read, you're gonna have a very wide angle to complete the double. So that's the first big tip I'd take into your training. The second tip is a little bit of a quick tip that I've actually been doing, but just discovered recently. And I'm not sure if it has a name, but it's this weird way that air roll works when it comes to double taps. And the best way I can explain it is just by showing you. So as you can see here, if you try to go for a double tap normally without holding down air roll, when you make that first touch with the ball, your car is gonna experience a sort of knockback uh, from that collision with the ball. But for some weird reason in Rocket League, if you hold down air roll while you connect with the ball, it actually reduces the amount of knockback your car takes. So obviously, look, if you're spinning using air roll left uh, and you collide with the ball, um, that spin is going to prevent your car from taking as much knockback. But the cool thing is, if you make contact with the ball midair and you're just holding down neutral air roll, right? You're not even air roll lefting or air roll righting. You're literally just holding down the air roll without spinning. You're still going to reduce the amount of knockback your car takes. So if you're ever doing a ground to double touch, if you're ever doing a ground to air dribble, um, or really just trying to make contact with the ball in the air, but you don't want your car to spin out, try holding down air roll and see if that reduces your knockback. It's a super cool tip uh, that I think is definitely gonna help with your double taps. All right, moving on to air dribbles, we're now starting to get to the mechanics that are, in my opinion, on another level of difficulty, right? With double taps and ceiling shots, you can kind of luck your way around it and stumble in to hitting one of these shots. But when it comes to air dribbles and flip resets, you can't really accidentally air dribble, right? Or at least accidentally air dribble well. So to cut to the chase, the number one tip I can give when it comes to air dribbling is with every air dribble, try to aim to hit the ball over the net. I remember when I was learning air dribbling, the trickiest part for me was that I could always get the setup down and I could carry the ball about halfway to the net, but after a while, I'd lose control and I'd end up fumbling the ball right onto the bottom of the goal line, which basically led to an easy save for the opponent. So what I always try to do with my air dribbles now is aim to carry the ball over the net. So if I'm air dribbling off the right wall, I will aim to score the ball above and to the left of the net. And the reason this is so good is because it's really easy to let a ball fall midair, right? It's really easy to be overshooting the net uh, and just kind of slow down uh, and, and drop it into the net. Whereas it's much harder to take a ball that's gonna come up short and somehow try to lift it up to score it, you know, upper half of the net. 
So to actually do this, when you're setting up air dribbles, I recommend you follow Seabell's advice, the advice that Seabell gave in his air dribble tutorial, and try to hit the ball in the fourth quadrant for as long as you can. If you hit the ball at this bottom part in the fourth quadrant, you're going to carry it for much, much longer than you would if you hit the ball, you know, in the second or third quadrant, and you're going to maintain control of your carry way longer, which overall is just going to lead to a much much more potent uh, air dribble. So give this a shot, aim to hit the ball over the net, try to keep your car in this fourth quadrant so that you're staying under the ball, carrying it up the whole time. And if you're anything like me, you're gonna see an almost instantaneous improvement in your air dribbling. But all right, guys, on to the final mechanic. What is the secret to flip resetting? <laughs> now, I wish there was a secret, but when it comes to flip resets, I have two pretty relevant tips that I think should help you. Now, once again, disclaimer, my other flip reset video specifically dedicated to flip resetting goes way more in depth with this. But the first tip to kind of shortcutting flip resets is you want to make sure you are actively seeking out the flip reset. Now, why do I say this? Because the most common error I see when people going for flip resets is flying up to the ball and expecting the ball to land on you to get the flip reset. If you try to flip reset this way, your resets are going to be super inconsistent and whether or not you get a good reset or a good bounce is basically going to come down to chance. And a lot of the time, you're just not going to get the reset because you won't have enough momentum pressing down on your wheels to trigger that response from the game client. So what you should be trying to do, the most important thing when it comes to flip resets, you want to actually seek out the reset using the slap method that I talk a little bit about in my other flip reset tutorial. Basically, all this methodology is saying is that instead of flying under the ball and letting it fall on you, you want to fly at the ball as fast as you can, and then at the last second, pull down on your joystick to slap your car into the ball um, and trigger a reset. If you can do this properly, you'll find that your resets are so much more consistent and you'll have less of those moments where you think you got a reset, but the game just never gave it to you. So if you can put these two tips together, right, catch the ball in the upswing and use that slap method to get the reset, you're gonna hit flip resets way more often than you were before. Now, with all that being said, guys, those are my top tips for hitting each of these different freestyle shots in Rocket League. Now, I know I wish I had more time because if I did, I could have made a full video on each of these mechanics, breaking down every part of them when it comes to, you know, the exact setup you need for each of the shots, you know, the exact mechanic, the exact requirements for each one. But big picture, these tips are like the 20% of knowledge that you need to get 80% of the results. So when you're training each of these mechanics in free play, try to keep these tips in the front of your mind. Just thinking about these few things is gonna help you so much when it comes to actually hitting these shots consistently. In any case, I hope that was helpful. And if you wanna see complete guides for any of these mechanics, make sure to be voting in the weekly polls I'm sending out for video topics to have a say in what videos come next. Also, if you're interested in getting coached by me, I wanna make sure you know my new coaching program, the Grand Champ Roadmap, is currently accepting applications for our summer roster. Applications for our spring launch were incredibly competitive. We had over 600 applications come in. So to reserve a spot and make sure you have a chance in getting selected for the summer launch, go down to the description right now and fill out an app as soon as possible to have the best chance of making it to the interview stage. But hey, if you have any specific questions about any of the mechanics I talked about in this video and you want an answer right away from me, make sure to go follow me on twitch.tv slash spookluke because I answer questions live over there every Sunday. And if this video did by some miracle help you get better at freestyling, let me know by liking and subscribing to the channel. But to those of us who train Errol first, learn these mechanics second, and take advantage of the tips I've shared today, to us I'd say clips are coming. Cheers guys.